Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. I don't know if I can run one of them fence, <laughs> but we definitely gonna put the name Darth Vader on mine if I'm running one. <laughs> Today is August 23rd. We are here in Cedarville, Ohio, and I think we're gonna go look at some crops. We also have Darla here today. She runs the ag business for ADS. And we also drug up Chad Henderson. I think he's trying to scout some stuff when he shouldn't be, but uh, obviously you're about to see mine. I can't see yours. So <laughs> what's your corn crop looking like this year? The dry land corn is, is good, you know, which, you know, down there we don't plant enough seed to I guess make a lot of corn, if you would. And last but not least, if you want your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back and callous pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old man said you reap what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. Out here in these fields of gold. It's hard out here. Always bringing the heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. They call me Cloud Boy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a You know, we're planting for a drought all the time. You know, you mean you was talking earlier and we was talking about, you know, well, you know, it's drier than what everybody thinks, you know, make go through pollination at 90 or 95 degrees. And that's the same way we are. So we'll thin our plants down, you know, I drop 28,000, 26,000, 24,000 on a lot of corn. And but we can make, you know, it's all about making money. You know, me and you here, you know, we talk a lot of, you know, we have a good time with this corn warriors and and have a good time with the competition part of it. But still this whole thing is about learning about how to do it efficiently and make money. Well, you want to go look at some crops? I want to go look at some good corn. good corn. How about we just start with some corn? Maybe some real bad corn. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Then I feel like home. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that big boy zoomed through this corn. I'm used to it. Yeah, so what you're looking at here is uh, 20 inch on 42,000. 42,000? 42, yep, 42,000. Where's the spacing at on, on that, at, at so 42,000? We're about 20 by nine inches. You can tell we can't get the stalk mass that you can on 30 inch rows, mm -hmm. but we can put a lot more plants down a narrow place, you know, and still be able to get a, you know, a good flex ear and still let it go and flex out. Well, we can't, I mean, when we go up to in the 40s as well, anytime, anywhere from, well, 36, it starts down from there. When we get up there, we get the same willowing effect. You know, the stalks, because they're just trying to get up for the competition, you know. But we'll do the same thing even on the 30 inches because it's still about, the spacing is still, it just gets so tight. And I don't know, I hadn't really ever done the math on that, you know, whether the spacing, you know, obviously we know the crowding of it per plant side to side, but per plant width-wise too, you know. I, I don't know how well we would let the heat out on 20 inch rows down there. And I, I don't know. You know, that's the, one of the biggest concerns we had going the 20 inch rows is the heat. Is it gonna hold it into the canopy? Is, is it gonna be able to breathe? And we've actually found that we're cooler in 20 inch rows under the canopy than we are in 30 inch because we have more shading. Shade. We, can, we can shade it more. So actually, here's a good visual. So on 20 inch, if you overcrowd, look what you get into. From where the end rows and mm -hmm. long rows have came together here. So you can just see, we can't, we don't have enough food. It's too much competition. We get a puny ear. So the best way I always tell people is, you know, on 20 inch rows, there's a fine line where you go too much and you just completely tank it. Or you can find that it's always, you know, walking a tightrope. But, you know, an another thing that we've learned with 20 inch rows too, so you can just tell by the girth of that one, And then the girth of this one, we we really want to try to affect girth as much as we can on 20 inch rows. Because normally, 
you know, we struggle. We can't come back in and side dress. We can't. Yep. We're very limited with the narrow rows of what we can come in and do. So we want to affect it early when we can to try to get as much girth in it as late as we can. But the middle point is where we're getting the length of the corn is where we would really struggle with. Yeah, so, because you can't get the application. We can't do that many passes. I mean, the corn yep. you're, you're looking at here has had two passes on it its yeah. entire life. Yeah, it looks good. You figure some out on 20 inches, that's for sure. That's a lot of, that's a lot of corn. If we've got a mile out there at this size at 44,000, just say we have 42, that's good corn. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Here at Advanced Yield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. No middleman, for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. Look, there's 10 on your seat. Get they won't eat you. I can't, listen, me and Amber can't stand flies. There right. Yeah. Oh, is that bother? You didn't get a fly? Yeah, I got a, he's got a fly back here. We got a roll down. Yep. Yeah. That's it. You're gonna do like this. You want to What up? And then you roll back up. <laughs> Coming up or on a right turn, 100 yards. Look at this. Just push the button. Oh, okay. Wait Go for on. it. So, it's Halloween. Um, we're out here in the cornfield with Dan. This is what it looks like in October at Dan's field. Now we just time lapsed a month earlier. <laughs> now we're in the time lapse. Yeah. So, actually, what we did there, we just. Uh, kind of cruised on, cruised on through <laughs> what the pivot wasn't getting, what we weren't watering there. Uh, you can see how that was just plain dead, and we've just moved a few feet over, and you can look at uh, just the differences in the sock, and oh, we're so dry this year that water and water management for us has been huge. We're just, we're still coming through the end rows. We're getting down to a sprayer track. Just getting down to where the rows go east and west here, so. This is, uh, this is an agrigold corn. I think it's 645, 16. Hope I said that right. So Chad says we got a tenth of rain and four inches of wind. So uh, there is some corn that's leaning a little bit out there. Got some tops broke. You get some big, tall corn like this with a lot of vegetation. You got a lot of leaf surface. And everybody wants a big factory. And, and this is a big factory, and it's got a lot of leaf surface. And and Dan's done an excellent job with the corn and the health, but you know, at what point does it equate to yield? That's what we're all trying to figure out. So, yeah, but small. this, this, I mean, this is no good. I mean, we don't, we don't want to see these. There's too much weight here and too much foliage up there. That, it's just, it's a recipe for disaster. It'd be I great guess. silage corn. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why we're talking about we want to keep them a little bit shorter. This, this is actually a different hybrid than we have right here. My Enros are a different hybrid. You know, good, good stout big ears. Now we are in a gap, so you're gonna have a little bit bigger ears. It does give it the opportunity to double ear, but the problem I can't seem to get by, I mean, I can double ear, right? But I'm gonna show you this. It double eared, it pollinated, but there won't be no kernels on here. You know, a few, basically nothing, no. Even with the sunlight, we can't get this double ear, and this should have double eared better with everything that was going on here, so that's something we haven't got figured out yet. If we're gonna try to double ear these stalks, it's just genetically not gonna happen on this, you know, this hybrid or we don't have something right yet. We're still working on that. It's hard to get through the year with that one uh-oh. Yeah. You know, it's like kind of Vega, you gotta stay out of the wreck. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just trying to dodge the wreck all the time. That's so, so you know, as if we, we just, this right here was just a fender bender. Come on. 
We're doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. Uh, we've been using BASF. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. The farm I bought where pretty much all my high yield stuff comes from, it's my playground where I mess around and do a lot of stupid stuff. That farm was a laughing joke. But it was the richest, blackest dirt you ever seen. But it laid what? It was a swamp. And it never dried up. Maybe 180 bushel we could get from it. It has never averaged below 300 bushel corn and 100 bushel beans since I tiled it. Mm -hmm. oh, it paid for itself in the first year. Around here, the first thing you do, you buy land, you tile it. It's just what you got to so do. So you, you really want to budget that in. If you're going to buy a farm yep. piece of ground, I mean, how much yep. will it how much will it impact a buyer's decision if it has tile or don't have tile? Like Huge. Some people won't even touch it, I guess, if it don't have tile already on it. Well, they may not want to so take it. the first thing, so the main's what's going to kill you. So do you need a 12-inch main all the way up to a 30-some inch main? Yeah. That's what's going to kill you. A systematically drained farm around here, it'll bring them probably around $4,000 to $5,000 more an acre. Now the other, but we're the opposite of you when it comes to wells. We don't have water. We're on a bed of limestone. Around here, you could pretty much put a, a stone core anywhere you want them. And normally by this time of year, we're begging for rain. I mean, any amount of moisture we can get, and we, our soil is gonna only hold it for so long. Like in a perfect scenario, and that's why I wanted irrigation at the farm, because we just had, because it's all on 60s and 40s, I was gonna come back and split them, put them on 30s and 20s, and put up a pivot. So I constantly had water being pulled through. Then I was gonna redirect my main and put it in a holding pond in Ohio and not let a main dump into a holding pond. Is this the intercrop here? So we ain't got it this year. No intercrop in this year. Got to keep it fair. So yeah, if you hold these real quick, just for the sunlight difference. So here's your outer rows with sunlight. And with those, I'd say we was probably about 30 feet into the field when yeah, I pulled was, those. Yeah, we was. So I was trying to get to where sunlight no longer, because what we learned from last year, sunlight affected about the first six rows. Yeah. So you can see what sunlight will do on the outside compared to the inside. But the beautiful thing, so what we're trying to do is, I know I've given up the length, just the girth, but if I can still, every three one of these is average 16 around. So let's just say we can do 16 by 25 or 16 by 30 with 55,000 of these puppies out there and still get the moisture for good test weight, you're, you're on to some numbers that are pretty pretty darn good. Now, if they all were like this, 55,000, we'd be breaking world records, but yeah, not gonna happen. So how much of it, I guess, have you looked on that in? I don't guess the wind really, it was, it was tasseling and the stalk was healthy enough that the wind didn't get it. I guess that was your biggest fear when that wind come like it's a 10 inch corn flat. Correct. That was my, it broke a bunch of tassels, pushed a lot over. Actually, it's it's so thick in there, a lot of it's leaning against itself. Yeah, it almost can't go down. Almost. Yeah, it's a real pain to walk through, but I mean, when we went in there, we got clothesline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as far as, you know, being flat and things like this, now nah, I, I think we're okay. $100. Bought it at Target. <laughs> Where's your money at? There's mine right there. There's mine right there. There it is. There it is. Game on. Right there. Cash money. Cash money. First liar ain't got a chance. There you go. Right there. First liar ain't got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Plain and simple. There's your yellow gold, cash gold. Yellow gold, cash gold, right there. 
There you go. That's the way we roll right there. All right, well, I want to thank Darla and Chad for coming today. Darla from ADS and Chad from Henderson Farms in Alabama. Yep. Coming up here trying to uh, take a sneak peek of different things. I think I showed you a fair amount of things in a short amount of time. We got to look at a lot of corn. Yeah, we had walked some 20 inch corn. We didn't get lost. We kept up with our sundial. You know, it gets awful thick up in that 20 inch corn. So in all seriousness, we've had a good time today. All looked at some corn, looked at some beans, looked at some, you know, 10 inch corn. You don't see that every day. We definitely like to have fun. I think that's, that's one thing right. that we definitely learned today is uh, it was a laid back, good time. Yeah. We both come from, from, from the motorsport world. Yeah. So we're kind of used to this. We can jab at each other and still sit down and have a nice cold beer. And we know it's yeah. you know it's and, and all in jest. You want me to get off the fence and pick one? You're yeah. going you're to have to yeah. pick a side right now. Maybe I'm going to go, maybe I'm just going to go north and win both and I'm going to pick Jake. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Today we're installing some ADS pipe. This spot here we've never worked before. Let's put some pipe in the ground and let's get a crop off of it. Maximize every input, maximize every acre. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. While we run over to my pond, we'll show what a mess it is right now, empty basically. Kind of show a little bit more of the droughts, ravaging stress. Well, you know, what's her name? Shazam. Sounds like a good name, Shazam. And that's a nice, powerful cow there. That's, that's a good looking that's cow. That's a good looking cow. I mean, I don't really know anything about cows, but I'd take that cow. <laughs> I think that's a good looking cow. I think that's a good looking cow. <laughs> She's ugly down here. If I had any more clothes, I'd swan die. This, this is my, this is my detention pond. As you can see, it's a it's pretty much a mess right now. We can't keep enough water to uh, uh, the fields here we have because this is our supply, you might say. So we're, along with being dry, we're just short on water. We have half in corn and half in beans, and they're both my babies, you know. And right now, I'm almost having to choose. I got do I let one of my baby die a little more than the other, or do I just keep them both alive? you know, enough that they're both going to yield reasonable um, or to, you know, sacrifice one of them. But, you know, the way I'm doing it right now, I'm just trying to keep them both alive. And we're, and we're doing that. I mean, they're both going to yield well, uh, way better. You know, we were talking about that earlier. I mean, on this light of ground, we're talking probably 200 bushel on the corn. Difference between not hardly making anything and, and uh, you know, maybe 250 bushel corn. So still big differences. It's a... Uh, it's a big money maker for us this year having having this water here. So. This is down one of our cattle farms. I told Chad, I said, we're going down to a cattle farm. And he says, you know, I never, I haven't, I haven't been around cattle that much. Never had hogs, never even fixed fence. I said, oh, shit. I said, we can fix some fence. He said, oh no, I didn't say I wanted to fix fence. <laughs> no, he said, he said what, what if it's addictive? And I get, I get addicted to fixing fences. And then and I want to get some cows. And it, yeah. Say no to peer pressure. Fixing fences, say no to fixing fences. Say no to fixing fences. <laughs> say no to dry ponds. That's right. If at all possible. <laughs> if at all possible. It would be great if we never turned that pump on. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I guess that's what I'm hearing, is that I'm on a road trip right now. So we started out and we went to Corey Atlas, checked in with him, looked at some 20 inch corn, some beans. Then we had to go to Hefty Field Day in uh, Princeton, Illinois. 
south of now at Dan's, just 50 miles away, so why not? And then they called me and said, the race car motor's ready, and it's in Arlington, Texas, so we're leaving Dan's. Pick it up, scratch back home. It'll be a smooth 2,000 miles. So Dan left, and he went to check on the drip system, so he left us here. So while we was here, we went to looking around. Well, we didn't have to look far, and he's got a whole line of totes, so we might do a little snooping to see what he's doing here. So we see these hoses laying around here. You know when Dan likes to say certain things about hoses? Well, right now we got this one running in the container. Oh, he put the taters on that one. So this is now gonna be called the Corey Atley Sharpie. How you spell Atley? Corey Sharpie. Corey Tank. Let's see how long it takes him to find that. Guaranteed to get it done right there. He come back in, see? He won't ever find it. He won't ever find it. <laughs> What'd you think of Corey's stuff, Chad? I thought he had good looking corn. Thought he had good looking beans. I like the big square fields. He had some double ears inside, but it was. Not really. Not about like everything. Else. Yeah, pretty bad. So we've been dry. You know, we've talked about that for a while. It's a lot of drought stress corn. Everything starts giving up. And then you get a, I don't know what this was, 60 plus mile an hour winds. And this, this corn just couldn't take it. This isn't one of my fields. It's right in our neighborhood. We were kind of driving around looking. I don't have any down this bad. Uh, we have some leaning. This is gonna be trouble harvesting, but this is just one of the challenges we've had this year is you get this because of drought stress. You know, you just never know. You put all your heart into a crop and spend all year and all your money into it, and then uh, 10 minutes, this can happen. So just kind of showing what happened in our neighborhood and hope it didn't happen to you. But the problem is that plant is done now. She's shut down. This will dry up like this will be like you went through it on your truck and you know what it's gonna look like in about four days. That'll probably be a corn reel situation on a head, you know. It's sad really. You know, there's nothing better than a corn grow field growing, but at a certain time there's nothing better than seeing it go. Right. Is, is yeah. it? I mean, you know. Yeah. Satisfying. Yeah, that's it is, ain't it? My rocks. <laughs> uh, I, I tell people all the time we got a lot of rocks around here, as you can see. <laughs> I also have some big rocks. You gotta have big rocks, that's what they tell me. Next week on Corn Warriors. As you can see, we got a lot of tar spots. That nice one, huh? Watch out, Kevin. We're kind of hoping that the extra kernels that we have makes up for lack of the kernel depth.